Welcome to Firebase Release Notes for April, where we cover recent big and small releases from Firebase. Now we have six topics to cover today, so let's dig in right away. Firebase Test Lab makes it easy to test your app by running auto-generated and customized tests on virtual and physical devices that are hosted by Google. And you probably already know about our auto-generated robo-tests, but I'll take any opportunity to say robo-tests, robo-tests, robo-tests. Test Lab has just updated its default Android device from Pixel 3, also called Blueline, to Pixel 5 or Redfin. And the default API levels have also been updated from 28 to 30, which means that we now default to Android version 11. Check the device catalog for this change and all other available devices. The Firestore SDKs for Android and JavaScript now use a new format for the local cache that they use for offline queries. This increases the performance of local document lookups, but it does require that the SDKs update the existing cached data. This automatically happens when you first run the app with the upgraded SDK, though. Support for iOS and other Apple platforms is still being worked on, so keep an eye out for the release notes of that SDK, too. And speaking of Firestore, with the latest Android SDK, it can now natively write and read instances of the android.net.uri class in your objects. This means you no longer have to provide your own serializers and deserializers for URLs. If you're using the real-time database for your app, you probably noticed that we have a brand new data viewer for it in the Firebase console. This new data viewer now validates that any data you enter is of the same type as the existing data. And this makes it less likely that you accidentally break your app. This was a complete rewrite of the data viewer, and we reduced the overhead for data that is loaded. This improved the load times by on average 50%, as we can see here. But as you may have noticed, there were some unintended changes too. And this is where we need your help. If you find that your favorite feature is mysteriously missing from the data viewer, or that something that you really like stopped working, or that the viewer doesn't work anymore on a system where you know it worked before, please file a bug report for that with our support team through the link that I provided right below here. Our JavaScript SDKs use a version of the IDB library that doesn't support ECMAScript modules outside of browser environments. And this led to a lot of developers getting an IDB index exception, like the one shown in this report. Well, in version 9.6.9 .9 of our JavaScript SDKs, we replaced the dependency with in-house code to fix the issue in analytics, app check, cloud messaging, performance monitoring, and remote config. So upgrade to the latest SDK, refresh your own modules, and get back to coding. And finally, Google I.O. is almost upon us. After two years of almost all virtual conferences, we look forward to seeing some of you back at Shoreline in person on May 11th and May 12th. We hope that everyone else will join us online, just like we did last year. From the Firebase side, we have an awesome segment in the live developer keynote, many more announcements in our What's New in Firebase talk, we have some great deep dive sessions by the engineers, and so much more content that we're having a hard time fitting it all in. We're also working on all new online demos, code labs, and learning pathways. And of course, we look forward to hopping around together again through IO Adventure, like you see over here. So register today at io.google. Yes, that's really a URL. And we will see you all at Google IO on May 11th and 12th. Those were all the updates we have time for today. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel below. Now, my name is Frank Puff, and I'll see you on a future episode of Firebase Release Notes.